If you found this video, you're probably getting ready to take your part 107 test, doing some last minute cramming. I hope I can add some value to that. What I want to do here is just take you through a walkthrough of some sample questions you might see on your part 107 test. These tests can be tricky. You may not know exactly in which order to do things as you're answering these questions. Uh, and so I just wanna give you some examples here. Now I've taken close to a dozen FAA tests, not just the remote pilot tests, but also private pilot, commercial pilot, instrument flight instructor, certified flight instructor, ground instructor, all these other tests. So I've seen a few FAA tests before, and I want to use that experience to take you through how to answer these questions to make sure that you pass your test on the first time. If you ever want to see uh, other example uh, questions for your part 107 test, you can check out my part 107 practice test where you'll find close to 300 questions, questions that I've written myself and you won't find in any other study materials to make sure that you're ready to go for that test. And you'll find the link for that in the uh, description for this video. So let's get right into taking a look at some of these example part 107 questions. So for this first question, it'll ask you to refer to figure 20, area one. The Fentress Airport with the identifier NFE is in what type of airspace? So you'll have your test booklet with you. You're going to open it up and go to figure 20 and then find area one. And that's going to help restrict your search on that chart. So we're looking for Fentress, NFE. We search around this area, area one, and we find Fentress and FE to the south of Norfolk. When we find the runway associated with Fentress, we see that it is a magenta runway, meaning that it's not towered and it is surrounded by a dashed magenta line. As we move out from that runway, the first airspace symbol or line that we get to is that dashed magenta line. Now, hopefully you're able to immediately identify that as class E airspace that goes down to the surface. But if you don't, or you just want to verify to make sure that what you think is the correct answer is indeed correct, you have that aeronautical chart legend in the beginning of the test booklet. I think it's one of the first pages. You go to that chart legend in the airspace information section, and you see the dashed magenta line indicates Class E surface airspace. Don't forget about this legend. It will help you with a lot of the questions. You can see how much valuable information is on this one page. There's a lot of really good stuff on here. It'll not only help you answer questions that you just don't know, but it will also help you verify and help you be more comfortable about the questions that you're answering. So going back to our answers, it is not class C because it is outside of that class C airspace ring, and it is not class G because that dashed magenta line means that the controlled class E airspace starts at the surface. So class E is the correct answer. Okay, this next question has us referring to figure 21, area one. After receiving authorization from ATC to operate a small unmanned aircraft near Minot International Airport, MOT, while the control tower is operational, which radio communication frequency could be used to monitor manned aircraft and ATC communications? Remember that you won't be talking directly to air traffic control or other aircraft while you're flying your drone near an airport. However, Listening to those frequencies can sometimes give you valuable situational awareness about aircraft coming and going. So we go to area one at the top of the chart and we find Minot, verifying MOT. And in that information block, we see under that first line, CT118.2 with the little star and circle C next to it. CT stands for control tower. That is the control tower frequency, 118.2. The star means that the control tower is only operational part-time, and the little circle C next to it means that when the control tower is closed, 118.2 becomes the common traffic advisory frequency. So no matter what, whether or not the control tower is open, 118.2 is the frequency that you're going to want to listen to for situational awareness on other aircraft. We see 122.95 towards the 
end of that information block, which is the Unicom frequency that's for ordering fuel or finding rental cars. And then ASOS, 118.725. Remember, that is the pre-recorded weather briefing. So the correct answer is C, 118.2. The next question has us staying on figure 21 and asks us which airport is located at 47 degrees, 40 minutes north, and 101 degrees, 26 minutes west. So let's start with the latitude, the lines parallel to the equator, the ones that are flat or horizontal on the chart. And it asks us which airport is at 47 degrees, 40 minutes north. So we're going to look for 47 degrees. But if you see on this chart, there is no line of latitude labeled 47 degrees. All we see is 48 degrees up here at the top. But remember, each one of those quadrants is 30 minutes by 30 minutes. So if we go south or down from 48 degrees towards the equator, those numbers get smaller. So that next line to the south is 47 degrees, 30 minutes. And we need to find 47 degrees, 40 minutes. Each one of those small little tick marks represents one minute of latitude. So we start at 47 degrees, 30 minutes, and go back to the north, 10 minutes or 10 tick marks. And this is 47 degrees, 40 minutes. Once we find the latitude, I just like to leave a piece of paper parallel to that line so that I can remember where that is. And now we work on the longitude, 101 degrees, 26 minutes west. We see the vertical line right here is labeled 101 degrees. That means that if we keep moving west or to the left, that next quadrant, that next vertical line must be 101 degrees, 30 minutes. So we just move back to the east four minutes or four tick marks to get to 101 degrees, 26 minutes west as we're subtracting that four, four minutes from 30 to get 26. And as we move along that sheet of paper, we get to the Garrison Airport at that intersection. Okay, this next question gets a lot of people. We're going to go to figure 26, area two. While monitoring the Cooperstown CTAF, you hear an aircraft announce that they are midfield left downwind to runway one three. Where would the aircraft be relative to the runway? Well, guess what? You don't even need a chart to answer this question. The chart can help you visualize what runway 13 looks like, but I would always just recommend drawing this out. There's less chance of you making an error. You're going to have a piece of scratch paper and a pencil with you, so there's no reason not to draw things out during these long two hours that you have. So first, draw out your four cardinal directions on the compass. Label that north 360, and then every 90 degrees clockwise, we're gonna have 90 degrees to the east, south is 180 degrees, and west 270 degrees. The first piece of information for this question is that the aircraft is landing on runway 13. You should know from your studies that runway designations are based on the magnetic direction that the runway faces with that last zero cut off. So runway 13 faces the direction 130. 130 is pretty much dead between 090 and 180. So right where 130 would be, draw a little mark there, and then draw a runway from that point intersecting the center of the compass. This is your runway. And then draw an arrow where the aircraft would be facing if it's on final approach to that runway, which is 130. The aircraft will be facing that 130 mark that you drew. So we draw the arrow facing in that direction as that aircraft is landing on that runway. The other information that we have is that the aircraft is making left-hand turns because it said that it's on the left downwind. So now we just draw that rectangle with the aircraft making left-hand turns. And this is the path that the aircraft is flying over the ground in this traffic pattern. 
downwind means that the aircraft is parallel to the runway, facing the opposite direction of where they're going to land. So just put an X on that leg, the downwind leg, on that portion of the traffic pattern. And that is the side of the runway that they are on when they announce that they are left downwind for runway 13. Now our choices are east, south, and west. That aircraft is certainly not on the south side. It's also not to the west side. The aircraft could be considered on the north side or the east side, but the east side is the only other option in the test answers here. And so that is our correct answer. Okay, this next question is another latitude and longitude question. We're using figure 26, area four. You've been hired to inspect the tower under construction at 46.9 degrees north and 98.6 degrees west near Jamestown. What must you receive prior to flying your unmanned aircraft in this area? So we go to figure 26, area four, and we're looking for a tower that is under construction in the area of 46.9 degrees north and 98.6 degrees west. So here's 47 degrees north. So we move south a tenth of a degree, which is six minutes or six tick marks. And here's 98 degrees and 98.5 degrees west, which is 98 degrees 30 minutes. So we keep moving further west a tenth of a degree or six tick marks. We find a couple of towers in this area, but remember to read the question. You'll have hints in the question. The question asks about the tower that is under construction. Only one of these towers has a UC next to it, which means under construction. And remember, you can find that information in the sectional legend in the beginning of your test supplement booklet. So we have that 1,727 foot tower UC. And that, as we see, lies within a dashed magenta line. That dashed magenta line, again, going back to our sectional chart legend, means that it is class E airspace that starts at the surface and it is controlled airspace. And in class E, surface airspace, the regulations say that you need ATC authorization to fly there. So the correct answer is ATC authorization. It's not in any kind of military airspace, so that's an incorrect answer, and it's not in any national park. So that's also wrong. Process of elimination, it must be that ATC authorization is required. Refer to figure 25 area three, the floor of class B airspace at Dallas Executive, RBD is what? So we go to figure 25 and search for area three, looking for RBD. And here is Dallas Executive RBD. We see the runway for that airport right next to that area three icon. And that airport is in class D, class Delta airspace, but that's not what the question asks. The question wants to know what is the floor of the class B, Bravo airspace above it. Remember that class B airspace altitudes are given in MSL altitudes and they look like fractions with the top number being the top of the airspace and the bottom number being the bottom or the floor of the airspace. So in that class B sector right here where Dallas executive is, we see 110 over 30, which means that the floor, the bottom of that class B airspace is 3000 feet MSL. Refer to figure 78. You have been hired to use your small UAS to inspect the railroad tracks from Blenco, southeast of Sioux City to Onawa. Will ATC authorization be required? The first step is to find Blenco and Ottawa. We see Sioux City in the center of this figure and the question tells us that Blenco is to the southeast. So we're going to move to the southeast from Sioux City and we see Blenco right here. We're going to move along those railroad tracks because that's what the question is asking. Move along the railroad tracks until you find Onawa, which we see is to the north. And the question wants to know if ATC authorization is required for that stretch. So now that we know which area we're operating in, we need to know which airspace we're going to be operating in. We see a few thick shaded magenta lines in this area, but the railroad tracks are outside of all of those areas. 
These thick shaded magenta lines mean that Class E airspace inside of those lines starts at 700 feet. Outside of that, Class E airspace doesn't start until 1,200 feet above the ground. So that puts us in Class G airspace, which is uncontrolled, which means that ATC authorization is not required. So the correct answer is B. A is incorrect because there is no Class D Delta airspace near Blencoe and Ottawa. And Class C is incorrect because there is no control tower at Ottawa. It is a magenta airport. Again, process of elimination to get rid of the obviously incorrect answers and verify the correct answer that we came up with in the beginning. Our last example here has a stain on figure 78. You have been contracted to inspect towers located approximately four nautical miles southwest of the Sioux Gateway SUX airport operating an unmanned aircraft. What is the maximum altitude above ground level that you are authorized to operate over the top of those towers? So we're going to find the Sioux Gateway SUX airport first. And we see it right here, almost in the middle of the figure. We're going to move southwest from there four miles. You have the scale at the bottom of the chart that you can use to measure, or use one minute of latitude, which is equal to one nautical mile. So you can measure four minutes of latitude or four tick marks, the ones that are on the vertical lines parallel to the equator, right next to this airport, and use that distance to estimate where four miles southwest is. It's got to be these towers that are all 402 feet tall because the 206 foot tall towers are directly west and the 400 foot towers are directly south. So we're going in between those. We're looking at the towers that are 402 feet tall, 402 feet AGL above ground level. Those are the numbers in parentheses. That's how high the tower is, the top of the tower above ground level. So what's the maximum AGL altitude that you are allowed to operate over those towers? If you remember from our regulations, we have to stay within 400 feet above the ground or anything attached to the ground. So with those towers being 402 feet tall, we can fly another 400 feet above those as long as we are directly above them, which means that we are authorized to fly 802 feet AGL directly above those towers. A is incorrect because that's our maximum altitude over everything. We can go higher than that if we're over a tall structure. And B is incorrect because that's the top of the tower. We can still go higher than that. C, 802 feet is our correct answer. So I hope this helped prepare you better for your part 107 test and exactly what to look for, what to do when you are answering some of these questions. Again, if you do want to see more sample questions, questions that you won't find anywhere else, you can check out my part 107 practice test linked in the description. If not, good luck. I know you'll kill it and happy flying.